Hi guys, thank you for joining me. I trust that you are well and that if you are not well, I hope that you are taking it one day at a time. Today I would like to discuss with you new content that I have given a lot of thought to. In the first um, video we discussed um, how I found out I have lupus and uh, over the week I have been thinking of what will I discuss next and after speaking to a lot of lupus patients, um, my, my colleagues and a lot of people that have watched the videos and have uh, given me suggestions as to what to share next, um, a lot of thought went into it and this is what I've come up with. I just want to mention at the, uh, at the start um, that the site content is provided for informational purposes only and does not intend to substitute professional medical advice diagnosis or treatments. Today I want to discuss something with you that um, I actually learned about in, in nursing school. When I think back, we discussed the five stages of grief. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it's, it's very relatable to us lupus patients. And you might be asking the question, why is she talking about grief when we are still alive, when we are still here? Well, please play Pay close attention to what I have to say and you will see how applicable this is to our lives and um, helps us to move on after the diagnosis. So um, Kubler-Ross stated these um, stages and uh, whilst there is a lot of debate among experts, among healthcare workers on the stages of grief, people who are in chronic pain like us are just saying, help me, please help me. Individuals with chronic pain may lack awareness um, that they are feeling grief. We're not aware that we are grieving the, the life we once knew. We are not aware of, um, you know, the things that we are missing, the abilities that we once had. We don't think of it as grief. We think we become angry, we become frustrated, but, um, People who suffer from chronic pain may experience losses in several areas. And some of the things I thought about in my own life that I can share with you, and you can probably relate, you, not necessarily with just lupus, but with any disease that you've been diagnosed with. Um, these are some of the things that we miss. These are some of the things that we um, don't have the ability to enjoy anymore. And one of those is, the comfort of just having a healthy life, the career, income, self-efficacy, cognitive function, intimacy, pride, joy, self-esteem, self-control, independence, mental health, hope, dignity, and certainty. Healthcare providers may overlook us and the patient's biggest losses in life whilst treating the diagnosis coming up with new treatment regimes and new suggestions um, what about looking at the individual in a holistic manner thinking about um, the, the mental impact the emotional impact that all of these losses has caused this person to suffer and I, I feel I've earned the right to talk about it because many of you do know that I am a registered nurse and I'm not able to work at the bedside of a patient, which was my biggest disappointment. And I found that after I found out I have lupus, I was going through the stages of grief myself. And there were many times I questioned, what on earth is this? Why can't I move past this diagnosis and just live again? But I want to mention Kubler-Ross model stages of grief. And um, there's an acronym, acronym by which I remembered it when I was in nursing school. And that is how I can still remember it so, you know, so easily. And we use the acronym DABDA. And that's um, the stage one, which is the denial stage. Stage two is the anger stage. Stage three is the bargaining stage. Stage four is the depression stage. Stage five is acceptance. Hence, DABDA, the five stages of grief. And remember, while I'm discussing this, 
This is not linear in any way. Kubler-Ross made known that after going back and after much deliberation back and forth, um, people questioning why did she you know, mention it in these stages, it does not always happen that way. And you will find that many times you revert to the stage that you once were at. So whilst it looks like you're moving on, only to um, be um, in a situation where you find that you are, you know, a few steps back facing these stages all over again. And that is absolutely fine. Let's discuss stage one. Stage one is the denial stage um, where you are in shock. You are in a state of shock. Uh, I don't know if you remember in the first video when I mentioned after doctor mentioned the diagnosis to me, everything else to me was a complete blank. I didn't register anything else she said to me. I was in utter shock and disbelief. Can this really be happening to me? Why me? Why not someone else? Uh, why would God allow something like this to happen to me? Because I am here and I'm doing good and I'm helping other people. Why must I be sick? And this emotion is generally replaced with awareness. You become aware of what is wrong uh, because now you, all the while you've been going back and forth, um, you've been thrown with different diagnoses of depression and anxiety, uh, people telling you this is not real, you, you must get to grips with yourself, rest, stop stressing, um, there's no diagnosis, you just need to get a hold of your life and then suddenly you are told that you have lupus and then you have to wonder now what? You're in, de in denial because you think what if doctor made a mistake? What if they put the wrong blood results into my file? You know, like how it happens in the movies. And you, you know, you wonder, is everything going to be okay? And then you say to yourself, no, you know what? I remember my life. I remember who I am and I don't need any help. I'm in denial. I'm not accepting this. The next stage is anger. The stage starts as soon as the person realizes that denial cannot contribute. It can be very difficult to care for someone at the stage due to the emotions like anger and frustration. And I can tell you in my life, um, you know, I've, I find myself being angry at the most um, irrelevant things that people might, might seem or might deem as insignificant or irrelevant why would you be angry over such trivial things but i find myself many times when i'm asking for help for my children and if they are not responding fast enough i get really angry i get really frustrated not at them but at myself because i think to myself what happened to me why can't i do the simple task that i used to do before why is this so difficult for me so many times people will look at you and perceive you as being an angry person somebody who's not dealing with with the disabilities or the or the lack of abilities they off from the diagnosis and think it's something simple why would you be upset over that but that is just the point we are angry because we cannot do the simple things that we used to do uh, you have moved from the stage of being an independent person to now asking for help i struggled with that for a long time I struggled to ask for help because I was all, always the one helping others and now I had to be the one who had to ask for some help. The third stage is bargaining. Here you have a sense of hope or false hope, false the stage. And if the person could go, um, you know, I know we can speak to God sometimes and say, you know what, if you give me a little more time, I could do this with the time you give me. I promise I'll be a better person. I promise I'll try harder. And I remember in my life, uh, as I reflect on this, how many times I bargained with God in, in, you know, in a sick bed, in hospital. And I remember this one moment when I was really struggling to catch my next breath. I was on oxygen, but I still, still didn't feel like I had enough oxygenation. And uh, I would speak to God in that moment and I would say, come on, you know what? you have the power to give me the, my next breath. And if you do, I promise you, I will try to be a better person. I promise you that, you know, I will not make the same mistakes I made before. 
uh, so it's the bargaining phase and I used to think what are you saying what are you saying to God that you know are you really going to be able to keep up with the promises you're making but at that time you're not thinking that way you're so desperate for uh, a change you're so desperate for a um, for something different to happen in your life for somebody to just take away what's wrong and uh, so you just you will do anything to change the situation you're in and then you start to bargain and the stage four is depression depression is when the person comes to understand the reality of the situation the person may shut out others become silent and openly show their emotions and oftentimes the statement that we can relate to depression is what's the point what's the point of living what's the point of getting up and going out and nothing changes the facts still remain i am chronically ill i have lupus it's incurable um what is the point why can't i just die i have nothing to live for anymore if i cannot do the things i once did i don't want to live anymore and when i speak to lupus warriors on a daily basis i get calls from uh, people that are struggling who would say this often what is the point of us living it feels like torture it feels like this is so unfair why do we have to have lupus why do we have to struggle this way and it gets you to that point where you become so depressed that you don't even want to get out of the bed and face the world and i remember being in the stage of depression once when uh, when i lost my hair when i was sitting in my house all alone and i thought to myself you know what i'm not going to leave the house i'm actually going to stay here so that i don't have to face the world i don't have to tell anybody what is wrong when they ask me um i can just hide in here i'm fine here i don't need anything outside if i need something i will send somebody to get it for me and slowly but surely i was depressed isolated from the life i once knew and that is the depression stage and finally the acceptance stage the person comes to understand the reality of the situation the person may shut out others, become silent, and openly start to show their emotions, start to talk about it, start to tell others, hey, I have lupus too, and you know what, I know what you're experiencing, I feel the same way too, and you've accepted, this is the way life is now, this is what uh, I've been told, but whilst I accept what is wrong, I am going to accept the life I now have and embrace all that remains and live my best life, put my best foot forward, live one day at a time. And like with lupus, we have days when we can't always function. You know, guys, when when I had to put out new content after the first video, I used to tell myself the night before, I'm going to do this video tomorrow. But there were days I felt so ill. There were days I just couldn't climb out of bed. Um, even want to do this content and give hope to others when I myself didn't feel hopeful at all. And um, my mom would come to me and I would say to her, you know what, I, I don't think I should be doing this. I, I think I should just leave it. And then my mother said, uh, you know, you said that if you impact one life, it's worth living. So you have to keep going. You have to keep showing up because the show must go on. And uh, today I want to speak to you about the something that really impacts my life on my down days the days when i sat back and i and i grieve over the life i once had and embrace my new life guys this is something that really um gives me hope gives me courage to live in the now moments of life and um it is called the dash poem and it's written by linda ellis and this is what it says. I read of a man who stood to speak at a funeral of a friend. He referred to the dates on the tombstone from the beginning to the end. He noted that first came the date of birth and spoke of the following date with tears. But he said what mattered most was all the years between the dash. For that dash represents all the time they spent alive on earth. And now only those who love them know what this little line is worth. For it matters not how much we own, the cars, the house, the cash, 
What matters is how we live and love and how we spend our dash. So think about this long and hard. Are there things you'd like to change? For you never know how much time is left that can still be rearranged. To be less quick to anger and show appreciation more and love the people in our lives like we've never loved before. If we treat each other with respect and more often wear a smile, remembering that this special dash might only last a little while. So when your eulogy is being read with your life's actions to rehash, would you be proud of the things they say about how you lived your dash? You know, I want to leave you with this challenge today. Life can feel endless at times. But you know, when I read my Bible, it reminds me that compared to eternity, an individual life on earth is like a vapor chased away by the morning sun. It is important to recognize the brevity of life so that we don't squander the time we have been given that many others didn't get the chance to have. So today, before I leave you, I just want to remind you, you know, when you wake up every day and you don't feel like living anymore and you feel like, what's the point of living? When you're going through the stages of grief, and like I said, it's not linear. There are days when you'll go back and forth and that's okay. Just don't stay there. Just don't stay there. You know, I want to challenge you today and encourage you to make the dash count. You're still alive. You're still here. You're still breathing. So am I. And that means we're still on assignment. Our time is not up. God is still busy with you and with me. The dash, that space between the date of birth and the date that you die, make that count. Do the things that will define your life in ways that make an impact on your world. Make the dash count. Until next time, thank you for joining me again. I hope this encouraged somebody out there. Remember, the show must go on. Keep showing up one day at a time. Keep the faith. And until next time, God bless you. Love you.